provincial government. Canada has 10 provincial governments, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. The provinces, as a regional level of government, have their own specific powers and jurisdictions and are authorized to pass legislation within their particular regional boundaries. Under the Constitution Act, they are granted powers that cannot be altered by other levels of government, such as the federal government. The provinces all have a parliamentary system of government. The members of the legislature are elected by the people of the province. The parliament buildings or legislature buildings for each province or territory are found in the capital city of each province or territory. St. John's, Newfoundland. Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Halifax, Nova Scotia. Fredericton, New Brunswick. Quebec City, Quebec. Toronto, Ontario. Winnipeg, Manitoba. Regina, Saskatchewan. Edmonton, Alberta. Victoria, British Columbia. Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. Whitehorse, Yukon. Iqaluit, Nunavut. In most provinces, the single house of the legislature is known as the Legislative Assembly, except in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador, where it is called the House of Assembly, and Quebec, where it is generally called the National Assembly. The Legislative Assemblies use a procedure similar to that of the Canadian House of Commons. The Premier The head of government of each province is called the Premier. He or she is an elected member of the Legislative Assembly and is usually the leader of the Assembly's majority party. What do we need to do together to manage that? I'm convinced that working together we will find all the answers we need. The Premier has a cabinet. The members of the cabinet are chosen by the Premier from elected members of the Premier's party. Most of these members are responsible for a government ministry, such as education or the environment. The number of members in the cabinet and the role of the members vary between province and territory. These members of the cabinet are also called different things, depending on the province or territory. In most places, they are called Members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs. In Ontario, they are known as MPPs, Members of the Provincial Parliament. In Quebec, we know them as Members of the National Assembly. MNAs, and in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, they are called members of the House of Assembly, MHAs. The Speaker The Speaker directs the debates and proceedings in the Legislative Assembly. The Speaker is an elected member of the Legislative Assembly. Mr. Crater moves that leave be given to introduce a bill entitled An Act to Require That Meetings of Provincial and Municipal Boards, Commissions, and Other Public Bodies Be Open to the Public, and that it now be read for the first time. Is it the pleasure of the House the motion carry? Carried. The Premier and his or her Cabinet or Executive Branch are the chief lawmakers. The Cabinet members propose most of the laws and they then vote on them. They are responsible for making and passing laws. These members represent the views of their constituents in the Legislative Assembly and take part in committees and debates on provincial legislation. Constituents are residents of an area that are represented by an elected official. The Lieutenant Governor The Queen's representative to each province is the Lieutenant Governor. The Lieutenant Governor does not belong to a political party and does not favor one party or its policies over others. While their modern-day role in government appears to be mainly ceremonial, the Lieutenant Governor does have the power to dismiss government and call an election.
Will the throne speech explain why the Premier is handing out billions and billions of dollars in corporate tax giveaways when our hospitals don't have the funds to provide frontline services to the people of this province? The opposition is made up of elected members that are not part of the governing party. The role of the opposition is to criticize government activity, propose improvements, and present itself to the public as an alternative to the party in office. Yesterday, the Premier criticized the cost of Ontario hosting the G20, saying, and I quote, I have the same reaction as Canadians do. A billion dollars is a lot of money, end of quote. Speaker, I always uh, appreciate the positive, constructive suggestions coming from <laughs> the other side. The provincial governments are responsible for issues that are outlined in Canada's constitution. They are responsible for things like natural resources and the environment, hospitals, property and civil rights in the province, education, administration of justice, social services, control over local government, prisons. Territorial government. The provinces are quite different from territories, the other type of regional governments in Canada. Canada has three territories, the Northwest Territories, the Yukon, and Nunavut. Whereas the provinces are constitutionally independent, the territories are not. This means that the federal government has the power to create territories, as well as to decide what powers and jurisdictions they have. Under Canada's constitution, the territories have no authority to govern, so the official head of a territorial government is the federally appointed commissioner. However, in recent years, the commissioner has become more like the lieutenant governor, giving final approval to legislation passed by the assembly, but leaving major decision-making up to its elected members. A territory's areas of responsibility are similar to those of a province. The Northwest Territories is one of only two federal, provincial, or territorial jurisdictions in Canada that operate under the consensus system of government, rather than the more familiar system of party politics. Within this system, all members of the Legislative Assembly are elected as independents in their constituencies. Once elected, the members travel to the Legislative Assembly, where the first order of business is a secret ballot election of the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. They then elect the Premier and Cabinet Ministers again by secret ballot. The consensus system of governing is more in keeping with the way that Aboriginal people have traditionally made decisions. Unanimous agreement is not necessary for decisions to be made. A simple majority carries the vote. As with the Northwest Territories, Nunavut MLAs do not represent political parties. Nunavut is governed by a public government granting equal representation to all residents. The issue related to um, nursing and housing is an issue, then that will be something that will be incorporated into the discussion on the new design of the health centre. In Nunavut's Legislative Assembly, decisions are also made by consensus, and a simple majority is all that is required to pass legislation. Members of the Assembly who are not cabinet ministers act as the opposition. The Yukon Legislative Assembly is much like a provincial assembly. The Yukon has adopted the party system, under which the government leader is the leader of the party electing the most members to the assembly. One of the most important things uh, with regards to the porcupine caribou herd, for example, has been put in place a process to start protecting the porcupine caribou herd. The government leader appoints cabinet ministers from among the elected members of that party, and together, the government leader and ministers make up the government. 